What's up guys? Today, the Diablo 4 team had their live stream showcasing what we can expect from the Season 5 PTR next week. Before we get started, here's a real quick too long didn't watch. The PTR will go live on Tuesday, the 25th of June. The new season mechanic is going to be a new endgame activity called Infernal Hordes, which is a wave-based game mode. After every wave, you can choose between a few combinations of a boon slash bane that last for the rest of the run. After the last wave, you make your final choice, then fight a set of bosses. If you defeat the bosses, you can choose between four chests with different rewards. We're getting over 50 new uniques and legendary aspects, and the Season 4 itemization updates are being applied to uniques. There are also going to be a slew of class updates for all of the classes as usual, which I will probably go over in a later video. If you want to see more coverage of Diablo 4 Season 5, be sure to subscribe as I will be covering all the news as it comes out over the next few weeks, as well as playing on the PTR to collect information to share here as well. With that out of the way, let's dive a bit deeper into the better information we've gotten today. To start out, we don't yet know the name of Season 5, but the theming is going to be a Return to Hell, which will be exemplified mainly in the new Infernal Horde's endgame mechanic, as well as the quest line that will be progressing throughout the season. We don't yet know much about the quest outside of it becoming available once you enter World Tier 3 and it being how you unlock Infernal Hordes, as well as the title of the quest line being The Eyes of the Enemy. Infernal Hordes will take place in the Realm of Hatred. You enter the Realm of Hatred by using Infernal Compasses, which can be found by killing endgame bosses as well as doing Helltides, Nightmare Dungeons, or Whispers. You will also receive one guaranteed compass upon completing the Eyes of the Enemy questline. There are eight tiers of compasses which scale in difficulty and world tier. Tier 1 is available in World Tier 3, Tier 2 is available in World Tier 4, and Tiers 3 and higher are only available once you reach level 100. Each tier of the compass increases the number of waves, which starts at 5 for Tiers 1 to 3, increasing to a max of 10 waves at Tier 8. The tiers also increase the difficulty of the monsters, as well as the amount of reward you receive and decreasing your available number of revives, much like how Nightmare Dungeons work as you go up in levels. During a run, you will also sometimes receive Abyssal Scrolls, which can be used to increase the tier of a compass. Each wave of Infernal Hordes will last 90 seconds, at the end of which all monsters will stop spawning. Once you've killed them all, you will be given a choice of Infernal Offer, each Infernal Offer will be a different set of Boon and Bane. A couple of examples would be one, which is Hellfire Rains Upon You and at the end of each wave spawn 1-3 to three Aether. Another would be Elite Damage is Increased and Elite's Grant Increased Burning Aether. These offers stack and last the entire run. They allow you to tune the difficulty of the run and increase the amount of rewards you get proportionally. Killing certain enemies and destroying certain structures during waves gives you a new currency called Burning Aether, which is used at the end of a full run. At the end of a run, you fight the Fell Council, the revived Council of Hell Priests of Zacharum from Travancall, who were corrupted by Mephisto during the events of Diablo 2. There are five individual bosses with their own unique ability sets, and you fight a random set of three of them at the end of each run. Once you've dealt enough damage to the council as a whole, the remaining bosses will go into a frenzied state, dealing more damage and using attacks that affect a large area. Once they are defeated, you are given the choice of four different spoils of hell, each of which will cost burning ether to open, and it seems like you can open more than one of them if you earn enough ether throughout the run, though that still needs to be confirmed once we have access to the PTR. The four different spoils of hell contain different types of rewards, those being the spoils of equipment, which contains legendaries and uniques, spoils of materials, which contains a large amount of crafting materials, spoils of gold, which contains a large amount of gold, and finally, the spoils of greater equipment, which contains one item that's guaranteed to have at least one greater affix. Currently, that is all we know about the new Infernal Hordes mechanic until we get our hands on it on Tuesday. There will be five new legendaries, uniques, and other items that can drop anywhere, but their highest drop rate will be from Infernal Hordes, so that will be the best place to target farm them. When farming endgame bosses such as Duriel or Varshan, who require materials to be put on a summoning altar to fight them, once you defeat them, the summoning altar will automatically reappear without needing to leave the instance and restart it, which is a great change to smooth out the boss farming experience. I like this change a lot. In-game bosses will also no longer drop rare items, they'll only drop their 
normal drops of uniques and legendaries, but instead of the rare items, they'll now drop a large quantity of gold. Varshan is also being changed so that he no longer requires four body parts to summon, he only requires a malignant heart to summon. The rest of the body parts have been removed from the game. The summoning for the Beast in Ice has also been completely changed, and now instead he functions as a standard dungeon, which means he no longer requires a special sigil to be crafted. It's not explicitly stated anywhere, but it seems to me like this means that the Beast in Ice will function like the other bosses, where you essentially go to his location on the map, and there's just a summoning altar, you put the materials in, and you summon him, and you fight him, instead of having to do a whole nightmare dungeon like you used to have to. I think this is a great change because the Beast in Ice is one of the easier bosses to fight and he has pretty good drops, but he was always really annoying to farm because you just had to do a whole dungeon before you even got to him, which none of the other bosses you have to do. So this is a good change. Helltides will now always contain enough grim favors to get you the full 10 needed to complete a whisper. That way, if you just want to get into the Helltide, complete your Whisper, and move on, it won't take more than about 15 minutes. Uniques and Mythic Uniques can now drop from Whisper Caches, as well as being able to be target farmed via Helltide Chests and the Obol Merchant. If you happen to roll a Mythic Unique when interacting with a chest or vendor slot that doesn't have one yet, such as there being no Mythic Gloves yet, then you will just receive a random Mythic Unique from any other slot instead. The overall drop rate of Mythic Uniques from non-boss sources has also been increased. Treasure Goblins now drop more Legendaries, as well as 1-2 to two Elixirs and a bunch of common crafting resources, plus Forgotten Souls and a chance for 1-2 to two Scattered Prisms in World Tier 3 and 4. The amount of gold they drop has also been increased significantly. Some weapon options are being opened up for a few classes. The Druids are gaining pole arms, one-handed swords, and daggers. Sorceresses are gaining one-handed swords and one-handed maces, and Necromancers are gaining all maces and all axes. In addition to that, the inherent affixes for every weapon type is being changed to fit the theme of the item more closely. You can see these new affixes on the screen now, but one example is scythes will now have minion damage on them, which makes sense. That's the main rundown of the new features that will be on the Season 5 PTR. I plan to do a video going over some more details for specific class changes as well as going over the new uniques and legendary aspects, so keep an eye out for that. I appreciate you guys watching. I had to take a break from uploading for a few months there as I unfortunately had some real life stuff come up. But I'm looking forward to getting back into the swing of things, and I really appreciate your support. I plan to do a little bit of streaming on the PTR next week at twitch.tv slash as well as here on this channel, and I'd love to see you guys there. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.